This is a Howard TV original production. Many years ago, a legend in disc jockey entertainment ruled the scene with his fist pumping, party starting style. From weddings to graduation parties to bar mitzvahs, there wasn't a New York area crowd that he couldn't corral into a frenzy. But like all good times, they simply don't last forever. This is the story of one DJ's rise, fall, and chance at redemption. This is the story of DJ Black Cloud, the return of Scott the Engineer. Scott the Engineer Salem. Widely regarded as the prince of his craft, the king of all media knew he needed to bring this genius of audio configuration aboard the Stern Show ship in order to keep his increasingly popular morning show sailing smoothly. I do remember that Scott was a recording engineer at WPLJ. That was his credential, and he was a uh, he was a really he was really good at it. He was good at working in the studio, cutting tape and uh, recording bits. He was quick, he was efficient, and he somehow came to K-Rock. I guess we hired him. We needed somebody who had special abilities, and he was our he was our special abilities guy. While they laughed at his shortcomings, the once proud engineer was locked into a career full of audio mishaps aplenty. Hey Scott, doing your job again? Yeah. I hate this guy. When something goes wrong on the show, technically, I'm going to be the one that Howard looks to to blame. I take it all the way down to right. zero. Push it all the way to the left. You can't push it all the way to the left or else it'll freeze. You, you gotta... No, I want it to freeze, Mr. Frosty. Like if a piece of equipment breaks during the show, that's totally out of my control, but I'll get blamed for it anyway. You had the information. That's what kills me about you. It's one thing if you didn't know. God bless you, you didn't know. You had the information. You sat there. Like a tub of lard. You had the answer, Scott, but you said you were a failure. The times that I notice Scott messing up the most is when we have performances in the studio. Why is Adam not hearing Robin? Would you address that? You guys hear Robin? I hear yeah. I hear. In your headphones? These bands come in, and if something doesn't work, who do you blame? You blame Scott. I can't hear you. You're kidding me. You're right in the same room. Scott. Scott. Wasn't yeah, this set up ahead of time? <laughs> I have this guy set this thing yeah. up. Do you pay him a lot? No. No. You get what you pay well, for. it shows. You know what? Uh, you'd have to walk in Scott's shoes to understand what he has to go through. What am I supposed to do? I, I want to hang myself. No, you get a new guy. <laughs> <laughs> Scott's really good, but, you know, he's human, and sometimes he's overwhelmed. Oh, my God. Hold on a second. Such an unprofessional. <laughs> Steven Steele is crawling on the floor trying to sign fix the program on audition. If there's any real engineers here, if anybody can come in. So when something goes wrong, sometimes it can be my fault. Scott believes he has a black cloud, and so everything does turn bad for him. I just learned of something that's gonna I'm gonna fucking go insane. Hey, Scott the Engineer, why don't you come in here? Why don't you do the goddamn commercial, you asshole? On the air, things get tense. Did you just win 100 bucks coming in here and touching my fader while I was talking? Robin sounded low. Did you just win $100? I was going to come in and adjust it anyway. Where's your $100? Give it to me. It's mine. Fine. I, don't, yeah, I didn't want yours. the money. You dance around it, in the halls like a fucking no. asshole, and you're ruining my I show. dance around the halls. Her fader was fine. Don't forget, we're a live show, so you got to cut Scott some slack, which I do. So why would they have to pay you 100 bucks to come in and adjust it? Because they just they wanted to see me, me, see me make an asshole out of myself, but... Well, you did. You no, made an asshole out of yourself in front of me. For 100 bucks. For 100 bucks. No. Why don't you quit? Thanks a lot, Scott. No, I'm telling you, I, All right, good. I discussed it with other people good around laws. here that she sounded low. And I was uh, going right, to come thanks. in and... Thanks. Okay. What? Uh, I screwed up again. And over the years, Scott's struggles left Howard with one downtrodden, angry engineer. 
This is what you want. This is what you want to see. This is what you want. Here. Because Scott's so low key, his boiling point, it takes a lot to push him to the boiling point. So you can really get away with saying a lot to Scott. Everybody has a boiling point, I think, and some just, a lot of stupid things get to me, just, you know, ridiculous, minutia stuff. You just, it just builds up and then you explode. When he cracks and he finally lets everyone have it, it's like no other anger I've seen on this planet. The most the craziest I ever saw him get was uh, about a week or two before the push-up contest, the famous tape that we play all the time where he just wigged out on Ganji. Stay out of my face! Scott, I told you. Get out of my face! Mike Ganji. He really got me mad one, one time when we were doing the push-up challenge, um, and they came to the gym to film me. And I just asked him, I said, can you please hold the footage until after I do the, the push-ups? So he went ahead and just showed it to Howard, and that just got me, it set me off. I told you not to use the goddamn tape. I told you not to play the fucking tape. Scott, did I say don't, you don't use, use the tape? We thought that Scott was either on steroids or taking some sort of a drug that was helping him lose weight so quickly that it was fucking with his brain because he, even for him, he was out of his mind. Get Scott, the camera out of here. Scott, you out of here! Now! Scott, Come on! Get out! Get out! He had his infamous outlets but a wallet devoid of funds forced this once proud Pied Piper of audio engineering fame into thoughts of another gig. I needed something more, and Rocket Entertainment just worked so well, it was a perfect solution. And so, the disc jockey dominance began. Music the way you want it. Music the way you want it. <laughs> Scott had suddenly found his calling as this bald-headed beat-starting machine soon had the tri-state area throwing their hands up, literally. Scott, do a little hands up, come on. Hands up, baby, baby, hands up. The reason I started Rocket Entertainment, I needed work to do on the side to make some extra money. He thought it was something he could do, but he couldn't really afford the equipment to get started. So it was, again, one of those things where, you know, we thought this will be really funny for the show. And we thought maybe it'll work out. Who knows? Maybe Scott can entertain people. I don't think of uh, Scott as a rocket. He, he's not... He's just low-key. We put in some money. Scott went out and... Bought his DJ equipment. I remember kicking in like $500 or something like that, and I probably should have just burned the money. What do we give him? I think it was, what was it, $500 a piece? Yeah, we all chipped in. $3,000. No, a couple of thousand dollars. Yeah. yeah. And we chipped in, and we said, Scott, start a disco business. Because he wanted to start a disco yeah, business. Yeah, he said he needed a couple of thousand I to just get it steak. started. The idea that he was making people's parties was just amazing to us. Maybe Scott just hasn't found his niche yet. This could be his niche. And uh, as it turns out, it wasn't his niche. And what's funny is like he is now a disco DJ and the last guy you'd want at any party is Scott. <laughs> but just as fast as this hair lacking sad sack rose to weekend warrior fame, his DJ empire rapidly began to crumble. There was an incident where the kids attacked me. One of the worst experiences of my DJing career was um, I was booked to do a pool party at a, at a large pool club. I was giving away prizes <laughs> and about 50 kids literally jumped me. Really? Yeah. And it was like a rampage. It was like the herd of, of bulls start charging me and, and start raping me of my of my giveaways. How old were they? What were you You're like, what? you know, six, seven, eight. <laughs> Year old. You know, 50 kids just to get just to get a 50 cent toy. Right, right. right. They jumped you. You mean they were beating on you? Some six year old kids attacked him. And I thought, how much worse could his life get? They must see him. They must see him, the bald head in that bathing suit, overweight, smoking cigarettes. And those kids go, hey, we gotta go break this guy's balls. Your life is worse than a clown. Yeah. <laughs> so I knew the beginning of the end was coming. I, I mean, this was ridiculous. This was totally, totally ridiculous. There, there was nothing that didn't go wrong about that business. And eventually, I guess he just gave up and he let it go. Every time I had to do a party or a wedding, I got anxiety over it. I, I mean, it really made me crazy. So I just, one day I said, I did, a, I did a party or a wedding or something. I came home, put my equipment away. And that was probably six or seven years ago. 
and I haven't touched my equipment since. Desperate for cash, Salem was once again forced to pursue other money-making endeavors. Somebody proposed having anal sex. <laughs> so the subject of anal came up. So me and Casey, Casey, who used to work on the show, we were goofing around in the studio, and he's, he came up with an idea. He was calling these Watt Packers and asking them if they would do anal for $100,000. So you asked Scott that question. Yeah. Would he do it? Because you could hook him up with it. Right. Do you get to use a condom? At least? Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, all right. Use it. Safe it, sex. It sounds like Scott's been taking anal for years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I let a guy fuck me in the ass. You get me $250,000, I'd do it right here on the floor. Really? Yes. That's right. Ah! <laughs> 250000 you'd go two minutes. That's right. Wow. No, that's like riding a bull. Do you believe him? I mean, I know Scott really well, and Scott does not have a gay bone in his body. You know, we've just he's got knows. A, soon he will. <laughs> of course, the money was good. Who wouldn't want 250000 But I don't think it was worth that kind of money for the ridicule that it would have gone through. With the prospect of anal sex in his rearview mirror, Scott contemplated a career in comedy. The idea wasn't really for me to do stand-up. It was just to come and, you know, say hello and maybe introduce the acts, more like a host. Please welcome the one and only Black Clouded Man, Scott the Engineer Salem! Then the idea was, all right, if you're going to go, why don't, why don't we have you do a couple of minutes of stand-up? And I said, all right, I can come up with a few minutes. And that's how the whole thing of, with the stand-up got started. I wish I had been there that night to see what went down. I get no fucking respect. You know, we have a band on the show called The Losers. And the reason it's called The Losers is because it was named after me. I'm the head loser. Scott has never made anyone laugh on purpose. Yet he thought he was going to get on stage at a comedy club where people are rabid to throw things at you and hate you and heckle you, and that was all going to work out for him. Now, the total disrespect is, I got kicked out of the fucking band. Come on, I mean, come on, I'm the head loser and I get kicked out. What kind of bullshit is that? I think I even said, you know, Scott, you really ought to write some jokes and, 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 and do some material, because like, to just stand out in front and go, hello, everybody, it's like, that's not going to get it done. Okay, pretty much, Scott, you suck. Thank you, I appreciate that. I could be wrong about this, but I think that might have been his calling. He could have been the next Ray Romano. Go Cavaliers! Yeah, Cleveland, let's go! Yet, despite the end of the Rocket Entertainment era, that little disc jockey flame continued to burn inside the lovable loser. Perhaps his best days weren't behind him after all. Somebody brought it up um, I, that I used to DJ and would I ever want to DJ again. You're telling me if the price wasn't right, you wouldn't come out of retirement? If the price was right, I would come out of retirement. He can't, you know, keep up with these new DJ guys. Everything's computerized. Before I even worked on the show, I did DJ at clubs in New York. You watch these guys, man. I, I, I flip out watching these guys with their little computers and they fucking mixing shit with the buttons and crap. In Vegas, everything's about the DJ. So if anybody wants me to DJ their weddings, you know. Forget just, weddings, it should be that. Or, they, they have an, at Club Pure, yeah, Saturday do, night, Scott the Engineer. I would love to do clubs right now. I mean, that would be the. <laughs> you don't know half the music. It's not hard to figure out what it is. He, he can't fucking do that. Come on. Seeing Scott get back into the DJ business was, is kind of like if, if Muhammad Ali were to say, you know, one more fight, I got one more fight in me, I think I could, I think I could go get some my type. No, you know, it, no, it's, it's, it's done. Leave it rest. It's buried. Close the door. But you can't keep a good or bald man down. Soon after his on-air plea, Salem was met with news even more electric than the slide-themed dance that he once used to rock wedding receptions to their core. I couldn't believe it. Scott was back in business. I thought after the little kids kicked him and brought him to the ground because they wanted more toys and prizes when he DJed that party, that'd be the end of his DJ business. But somehow, this is big club in Vegas that seems to think he's very valuable as a club DJ, that he's fun and delightful. The Club Pure from Vegas contacted the show, and they said... You know, we'd, we'd love to see if Scott could come and DJ at Pure. And um, I was willing to do it. I was, it was great. It sounded like a great idea. I was so happy for the guy. Seriously. 
I, I was dancing around. I told him we were sitting there making all kinds of plans. I was hooking him up for going out to hang out at night, even though I wasn't even there. You know, I was happy for the guy. I was shocked, actually, that he got that gig, but I'm happy for him. Uh, anything that keeps him off the bowling alley and out of the house is good. This could be Scott Salem's rebirth. The guy got out of town, man. He got on a plane and he left. Bright lights, big city. Scott the engineer? The time for disc jockey redemption had arrived. But was Salem up for the challenge? Or was this tale of rocket entertainment renaissance about to be swept away by the very same black clouds that had haunted him since his youth? There's a big difference between DJing at a, a high-end club in Vegas versus doing, you know, the you know the Weinstein bar mitzvah in Staten Island. Well, what I was thinking when Scott got this three uh, appearance deal or something like that, it was good for him. That means he's not going to be taking any cocks in his ass. That, I'm happy about that. I think Scott finally found something that he could do that'll make him a decent amount of money and he doesn't have to work too hard to do. You don't want to see a 60-year-old man with a cock sticking out of his ass. I'm sorry. That is not something I want to see, although there might be some strange people on our TV who do want to see that. I'm not one of them. Again, it's not the Weinstein Bar Mitzvah in Staten Island. I got nervous that he, you know, that he might like, you know, open up with the Macarena or something. But, uh, but you know, he's got a guy there helping him, and he doesn't have to haul his records. And you know, he's playing. It's good. Vegas, here I come. Hey, I'm Scott. Scott, it's hey. good to meet you. I'm Hollywood. Hey, Hollywood. Pleasure. Come Pleasure. on in, buddy. I'm a huge fan. Yeah, you and the show. <laughs> we're excited, so cool that you guys excited are here. to be here. We're excited that you guys are here. This, this is all going to be awesome. I wanted to do a good job for Pure. They were paying me well. They were treating me well. Um, I wanted everybody to feel, you know, like they were partying. Um, and this is the best place on earth to party with us at Pure. It's not that hard. It looks really complicated, and it, but it's really not that hard. The only thing is that you have to get through your mind to set the computer is your crate. Is all your music. We're really excited to have Scott here tonight. The way it came about was pretty amazing. Robert Fry, the president of Pure Management Group, heard uh, Howard and Scott talking on the show saying that, hey, Scott, if you want a DJ, you should come to Pure uh, Nightclub here in Vegas. And we made a few phone calls, and the rest is here. History. I haven't done it, you know, in five years, so, um... But you, but you DJed before, right? I, I'm sure, yeah, I had my own business, I did weddings, parties, I did clubs way back before that, so... Um, but things have changed, I see. A little bit, <laughs> a little bit. I think you have to look at Scott as kind of an elder statesman DJ. I'm gonna like, just do a quick run through here. Um, I, I'm excited. I, I don't want to fuck up, but you know, I thought of maybe playing like uh, I don't know, hands hey, up. Don't fuck up with me. <laughs> <laughs> maybe we should do hands up for a little while. He's old school. Scott is old school. Very old school. So we're good. Uh, all right, looks good. We're ready to rock. Next time, we'll be here at Pure with a full crowd. This is exciting to have. Well, I was a little worried that I wasn't going to be able to do it, but, you know, I'm, I'm confident, though, that it, there was a little apprehension. I was a little nervous. And the first night I did it out of the three, I was a little nervous. Caesars and Pure, they hooked me up. It was amazing. Come on, let's rock! Here's Pure! You got it. It's got the engineer. It's been a pleasure being here. Scott just got off. I'm going to be honest with you. Yeah, I mean, he's had some experience, and he, you know, he told me in uh, years, actually, of DJing, been a little rusty from five years ago, and we do have new technology, so I'm actually pretty impressed that he did well. Uh, if we had to grade it like a report card, I'd say he's about a D right now, but that's pretty good for the first time out. Everything went unbelievable. The night was fantastic. They treated me like I was royalty. Who the fuck does that? You know how I get treated on the show. 
So I mean, it was it was great uh, from A to Z. Everything went phenomenal. For years, Scott was jeans and oversized sweatshirts. He was wearing like a nice outfit with a vest and everything. You know, got the little thing going here. I thought he pulled it off. I mean, he was great with the crowd. The crowd liked him. Maybe a little bit louder on the microphone. But other than that, I thought he did a pretty good job, especially in a place like Pure, which eats DJs and MCs alive. The next time, I'm sure we can get him up to at least a B. I would say B minus B. I'm a pretty good teacher. I'm back. I'm DJing. I'm awesome. It felt great. I'm coming back. I'm going to really rock out the next couple of times of Pure. I still got the touch, huh? I'm the engineer, motherfucker. The balding bar mitzvah band leader turned raucous Vegas club general was starting to find his groove. But as all superstars know, with great success comes even greater expectations. And the eager engineer knew the calendar was not in his favor for his second trip to Sin City. So the second appearance rolls around, it was a holiday weekend, it was Thanksgiving weekend, and it, it worried me a little that there weren't going to be a lot of people there. I'm like, if, if nobody shows up, that's embarrassing. When we got there, um, the place was packed. Had a few shots, loosened up, so the crowd was was there and into it. I just kicked ass. It was great. Who better than Scott to be hired as the life of the party? Young people love him. There were amazing women there too. I mean, the hottest women in the world. And they were into it, and they were coming for autographs, they were taking pictures. Um, it made me feel really good, and it made me feel like, you know, I was, they, I was connecting with these, these younger people. I mean, it was, it was so good. I love you guys! Come on! Let's party! Yeah! He seemed a little old for the crowd, but they seemed to like him, you know? I guess, I guess you can get away with the old thing because he brings some amount of celebrity with him. So instead of people going, who's that old fuck over there? They're like, isn't that old fuck from the Howard Stern show? Second appearance was great. It was awesome. I thought it was a little better than the first. I have to give myself an A. I mean, you know, at least an A. I mean, you know, it was amazing. Um, had a great time. I mean, it was just, <laughs> I mean, I got so wasted on that second trip. <laughs> I couldn't even find my way back to the room. I still got the touch, huh? I just got the engineer, motherfucker. All right, so the third appearance is about to happen. It's my birthday. I'm psyched to go out there on my birthday and party with everybody at Pure. As his rejuvenated party persona continued to take shape, Salem shifted his focus to the many forbidden fruits that Las Vegas had to offer. The last trip out to Vegas, uh, I, got, I was piggybacking on Scott. I had an appearance at Rick's. So we all go to Rick's. And uh, we get there, Ronnie does his thing, and it's, they, they find out it's my birthday, so they call me up on stage, put him in a chair, girls rip the shirt off, they a little laugh dance from him, about five girls surrounding him. Guy, you can see, like, you know, the angels had beams come out, you know, out of their heads. Well, Scott was alive that night, man. He came alive, the fucking, the beams were coming out of him, man. I've never seen more tits in my face at one time than, you know, I don't know, maybe my whole life I've never seen more tits in my face. Pure says, come to this place called Dick's. So we get to Dick's, and Dick's turns out to be this wild, crazy restaurant where they throw napkins at you, they throw the utensils at you, you know, the, the waiters are get to be insulting and stuff like that. Um, and, and we're having a great time, and we're drinking, we're partying, and all of a sudden I get picked to come up and get a lap dance by this big, fat guy. And he takes out his big stomach and starts giving me this really sexy lap dance. I mean, you know, it was by this big, fat, smelly guy. And I'm like, oh, oh my God. But it turned out it was so much fun. We had such a great time. We were drunk off our ass, man. It was two o'clock in the afternoon, we were loaded. We get there, I feel so comfortable and so loose. I was just so loose and felt so good. They introduced Scott. 
and he's up there dancing, screaming at the crowd. Yeah, let's go! Yeah, I'm Scott the Engineer! He's fucking carrying on. He's getting everybody going. Come on, raise your hands. Do it. Dance! Have a good time all night long. Yeah, come on up here. You want to dance with me? Gets girls up there. He's dancing with them, man. He's having a blast. I thought that was the best night out of the three of them. I gave myself an A+. Plus. Guy I never saw before. New guy. New guy in town. Scott the Engineer. Alive. It was the capper of the three appearances. Um, and afterwards, it was just um, amazing. I felt so good. I, I, I felt that I should be doing this, like, once a month. So, was Scott back? Had DJ Black Cloud finally found the silver lining that he'd been looking for all along? My considered opinion is that Scott should hang up his DJ headphones and and go back to being a spectator. I think Scott likes the gig of not having to bring his records and not having to work too hard. If he could figure out a way to keep doing that, even if Pure decides they're done with him, I don't doubt the phone's ringing at some other club in, in some other nightclub in Las Vegas right now where he might say, hey, I'm available. What the future holds for me as a DJ is, yes, I would probably love to do it on a part-time basis. Um, if anybody out there wants to hire me. I would give up on the DJ thing at this point in time. I think it's time to uh, roll up the uh, carpet on that, close the doors, uh, either sell the shit on eBay or put it in a locker somewhere or bury it in a, in a time capsule in your backyard. It, it's, it's time to give up the DJ thing. The return of Scott to the DJ business is going to be very short-lived. I just had a great time doing it. It was a great experience. I loved doing it. Um, so yeah, I would do it again. I always liked Scott. I always felt uh, he gave his all for the show. And that's what we love about him. We bust Scott's balls a lot. The truth be told, he's a top-notch engineer. With a renewed sense of swagger, the once-over-the-hill DJ was reborn. And America was once again throwing their hands up. Can I hack it as a DJ? You're damn fucking right I can hack it as a DJ. I'm back, baby. 